during their presentations. We'll now continue with Francisco Badaro, the specialist with a vast experience in TBM and IP interconnections. He'll be making their presentation remotely, and he will be talking about Botnet Hunt. And Francisco, you have the floor, hunting botnets with an analysis of network flows and a comparison of IPv4 and IPv6. Good afternoon, everyone. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Today, I would like to share a tool with you, a community tool and something for from the standpoint of the to help you in combating and also a case study compared to the attack service for two botnets. This is an IRA monitor. I work with communication systems, routing, and security. I teach at some universities, for example, Salvador in Bahia, and currently I work at the company that provides traffic ITS in Brazil. This is an autonomous system, AS28186. It is an operator in Salvador, Bahia, with quite a lot of layer two traffic, one tera. It prefix has more than 100 autonomous systems. You all know Team Simru. This is an excellent uh, prize, excellent security services. Those who work with network engineering are certainly familiar with Team Kimru. This is part of the best practices. The Bogans and Full Bogans UTRS, which is I will be speaking of today, was not so well known. So. And then I will speak about Nimbus. I prepared an agenda to deal with three points. First of all, I will be making introduction, then the case study that I will be presenting. And if I have time, I will share with you the tool, followed by conclusions and future outlook. So let us look at the theoretical basis. What we're speaking of is about knowing yourself. We have to know ourselves before knowing the environment that surrounds us and beyond, we need to know ourselves. This is a philosophical principle. So how can I get to know you? How can I get to you know your nature if I don't even know myself? So if you know, if your network provides services to cybercrime or not, so this should be the concern of all operators, of all network operators. So this is Sun Tzu. He says, know yourself and know your enemy. Basically, we are speaking about a protocol or a set of protocols, as these are called. These are the flow protocols. These are the protocols to collect metadata on network traffic. This is how I like to call them. You have NetFlow, SFlow, JFlow, IPFix, which is the one that I normally use. All these work with an immense variety of data on the network. This includes the possibility of con analyzing anomalies. One of IPFix and is based on IETF RFC 7011 and 7012. This is expansive in terms of the templates. The templates can be used for a series of things. Now, basically, what we're talking of is of using the 
metadata on the traffic to generate knowledge. Knowledge on the network relating the metadata and the network flow with the signal intelligence of Team Simro. The control feed, the C2 feed, is a feed that is updated every 60 minutes. This includes information. And one of the things I like is the IP reputation feed. This is a reputation list and establishes a correlation of IPs with different types of functionalities. So as it has a global network of probes distributed in different points. It has a size of almost of over 12 gigabytes. We then this there are there is a correlation with these feeds and different botnets that were observed. But the issue is that the context is everything. The importance is to conduct a contextual analysis. And one of the missions we have in cybersecurity is to identify and fight the enemy. This is quite a big enemy. We're aware that information security is a war. It's not just a battle. It is a constant war. So we know that crime in general is a human modality. Cyberspace is also subject to crime, the same as is the case of human society. It is also susceptible to cyber crimes because this is something undeniable that we have. Fighting cyber crime, therefore, is our mission and should be a priority for all network operators. This is a priority of the entire autonomous, of any autonomous system in the internet. One of the various enemies, or a set of these enemies, are the botnets. A botnet is a set of hosts that are software, uh, malicious software controlled remotely. Most are ecosystems of malwares. We have botnets that are static for a specific goal, but that's not quite true. Today, we have seen several purposes for this. For example, stealing credentials. These are information and credential stealers. These are botnets that are used exclusively for DDoS to steal malware data. Our purpose is to identify the ones that have been developed in order to fight cybercrime. We have the purpose of botnets is that they support cybercrime and these are used for large scale attacks. The command and control activity is what I like to call the attention to in these presentations. Command and control is a type of remote control that is done through different types of channels. HTTPS, Telegram. This is something that should be fought against. I also brought data, global data, that you can see on the screen. These are the 10 worst botnet countries. Here I highlighted Brazil. When I did a penetration in 2020, we were rank, ranked in position number six, and now we are in number eight. At least we improved a bit. In addition to that, we have the 10 worst botnet ISPs. These 
maintain the control and command activity. And we also have the 10 worst botnet ASNs. This in the sense that in the infrastructure that have they have as many bots as other, well as other command and control problems. To a large extent, they are not even aware of what is happening. And these are real data of AS28286. This compares IPv4 and IPv6. These details here are the following at the top IPv4 and at the bottom of the screen IPv6 data. This is a rapid overview of the malicious activities that took place over 24 hours. I see 125,000 events in IPv4, and if I expand this to 30 days and 24 hours, I have 1.2 million events. So changes in the autonomous systems that are the origin of this issue. These are what we call the offenders. In IPv6, in turn, we observe that we have the same report. I Here, I kept the nine main ones. And in 24 hours or in 30 days, uh, I did not uh, manage to see in IPv6 uh, more than uh, three offenders. Uh, and in the uh, 24 hours of 270 events, there were only two autonomous systems. So expanding on this uh, 30 days to 30 days, we see three autonomous systems and 1.4 thousand events, million events. So here we have to highlight the difference between uh, the uh, data of IPv4 and IPv6 that uh, it's an evident reflection of the low adoption of IPv6 in the internet across the world of all the stakeholders, ISPs, uh, companies, and the different ACE and, and the rest of the autonomous systems. This reflects the low adoption of IPv6. And uh, just a comment in this uh, context. In this case, I didn't focus on the communications using the Tor protocol for capsuling, and uh, that could be an issue for an, uh, a, tip, a topic for the next uh, presentation because I didn't include it in this one. So how can we do our job? So we so we have to fight against the botnets to mitigate uh, the malicious activities of cybercrime in our ISPs. So uh, w I want to highlight that um, this uh, uh, fight has a dual benefit. First of all, it's uh, your collaborating with the health of the ecosystem of the community. So it's fighting together uh, for cybersecurity. This is a joint community activity to improve the global system. But I also like to show the benefit that uh, it brings to the autonomous system. That is, we need to realize that if I'm going to fight against the malware, botnet, uh, uh, steal of credentials. I'm going to improve the credibility of my operations. So the idea of fighting against cybercrime has two aspects. There are two issues that I need to observe now. Observe now. How can we do that? Well, we have to identify the actors uh, involved and uh, also the victims and the uh, offenders. We have to recognize uh, the malware activity when, and uh, their action in the networks. And uh, for that, we are going to propose uh, a method. And at the end, we also have to build the knowledge of the traffic of our network so as to contain the activity of, uh, and to protect it from the malignant activities in infrastructure. At this, these times, with such uncertainty, how can we work? We provide all the detailed information of the network traffic, uh, putting um, the cybersecurity in context and fighting against the botnets. Botnets are 
and uh, armies of those cybercrime. I always try to look for effective ways of fighting against botnets, that is, cutting the communication of command and control. If you can't command and control communication, then I'm going to succeed in isolating the botnets. So I can leave a, a botnet uh, as part of my network, as part of an, a specific uh, ecosystem, MRI specifying a DDoS attack against a specific company. I cut the uh, command and control communication of that botnet and uh, identifying the actors and the threats and with that, in addition to uh, taking good care of my traffic, I'm going to take care of my bandwidth. And how do I do it? With strategies, with intelligence, with science, and also with the assistance of a tool. That's a second topic that I will be developing. That is the solution that is uh, proposed by Team Kaimru. That is uh, a free of charge solution. It's, ba it's cloud-based. It's um, a system that is based on Kibana and uh, ASIC Search. It's a community service that, and uh, the uh, larger the number of members, the better it will be. The idea is to have the strongest uh, members of uh, the project to collaborate, and uh, for this, uh, so this solution needs. Uh, Ah, confidentiality agreement from both parties and the project that it will be done, the contextualization of the metadata of this partner with uh, the intelligence mechanisms of uh, botnet analysis intelligence and controller intelligence and malware intelligence, the IP reputation feed, all that will be uh, given back to um, the partner in a graphic interface with and support it in an Elk uh, stack file and a Kibana, in a Kibana customer dashboard. And with that, that will increase the visibility of your network and you'll be able to see all the malicious traffic going through it and then relating it to your metadata. What you will see is, and I'm going to show here, is essentially the metadata of uh, the, uh, the partner, in this case, um, uh, with the traffic provider, or the intelligence of the signal of uh, with the filters the, that uh, I used here. These are simple filters in Kibana. All the filtration, all the filters are uh, are straightforward. They uh, are operated just with a click. You develop the histograms, and you have different possibilities of filters. I'm going to show you some, but the idea is to list the active threats and to decide whether you are going to export them through API or through JSON. And you have to decide whether you are going to report them or to send them to the national authority because the events can be exported via API and relate through JSON. So how do you integrate that project? Well, the first requirement is being an autonomous system in the internet, an ASN. The next, to sign a non-disclosure agreement between you and Tim Kaimru for confidentiality. And then you send the metadata. Um, the, that is why, and uh, you receive assistance uh, to send the metadata. And re I repeat that all uh, the uh, metadata protocols, NetFlow versions 5, 7, and 9, Ipfix, Sflow, Jflow, and NetStream, all of them are supported. So now what I'm going, uh, what I, uh, here, I wanted to give you a demo for you to have a general idea of how to use the tool. So I'm going to stop what I'm sharing here on the screen, and let me now share the screen showing you the tool. I think that now you see my screen. 
with a tool, with uh, the dashboard of the tool. And here you have the Kibana interface. So here you have the Kibana interface and with 10 different choices, we have the dashboard for analysis of the traffic, for instance, with a, a knob that is the basic feature. I won't focus on this now, but your partner can also use the tool for the classical measurement uh, to detect where the tra his traffic is going from. So the tool gives you both knob, uh, knock and sock functions. That is what I'm going to discuss now. It's in the alert dashboard. So let me repeat the report that we had completed, the 24-hour report. Let me refresh. OK, so here we have the report. This is the 24-hour report, round the clock, exactly. Remember that this is actual traffic, real traffic. It's a traffic that uh, is taking place as we speak. This is a 24-hour report, and I'm going to filter for you to see the filters. This is the alert area. The uh, graphic interface is highly intuitive with uh, the port of entry, port of destination, and uh, the key autonomous systems, the main IPs, and so on and so forth. So let me take, for instance, the events, uh, the, the, the external events in the network, I'm going to classify them as not being very relevant, and I'm going to rem also to remove the uh, the the bots, uh, the pods that uh, have bots uh, infecting my environment. Remembering that the environment is a pool of prefixes with more than a hundred AS, so it's a very large pool. So here. I'm only going to leave the botnet traffic in the last uh, 24 hours. We have about 16,000 events, and I'm going to filter some of these. Most of you know them. And in 24 hours, I didn't have that type of attacks. So. I'm going to take it to draw this uh, botnet uh, that is for stealing uh, credentials, 14,000 events. And down here, we can see all the events, those 14,000. And the operator can filter and take note of JSON and uh, get to know what uh, the uh, attacking uh, uh, the offender IP is. And for instance, it can use this IP and block and uh, uh, compare against uh, the surface in IPv6. Just to analyze this demo, 14,000 for IPv4 and the same report for IPv6. It's 236 for that same botnet. And here. I realize that in this report, all the activity is going to Telegram. And here you see the same events, only that in IPv6, the offender, uh, let me see with Jason, the uh, demo of the autonomous, the offending autonomous system that is a customer, and the, the attacked that is a, a customer. And so with this, as we are running out of time, I'm going to finish with the presentation. I'm going to stop here. And I thank you all for your attention. But especially, I want to thank LACNIC for the support you gave me. 
in spite of the fact that I didn't manage to travel because of health problems. I want to thank Laknik for their support and Team Kaimaru for having enabled me to develop this project and uh, for the support and also for being able to present here. And I'm ready to answer any questions that you may have or if you want to pose any doubts as to your response. It's, it's a pity that you couldn't be with us. Now let's open the floor for questions if there are any in the room. And if not, I have one online. So while somebody comes uh, closer to the microphone, Henry Godoy is asking online, and they tell me, well, I'm, uh, please, my apologies. It's, it says, congratulations, Badaro, very good work. It's difficult to find comparative data because you cannot, uh, uh, there, nobody shares them. Uh, in your opinion, are we protected against the use by using uh, IPv6? No way. <coughs> No way. The protection, in my view, uh, the reason why IPv6 may give you the false feeling that you are more secure is precisely because the poor exploration of the attack surfaces. The IPv6 cases are just a few, 256, so I, didn't, I wouldn't like to correlate the implementation of IPv6 with a security issue. And even in my research, and uh, not, uh, that's not what I saw. I also, I already tested vulnerable things in dual stack with IPv4, IPv6, and actually in IPv6, the scanning method for responses is not enough. Actually, IPv4 answered, responded better than IPv6, so I wouldn't say that the IPv6 surface attack is any smaller or that security has to do with the protocol. No, I, uh, I link it to the low adoption of IPv6. Well, an applause for Francisco.